You are listening to a sermon by Pastor Christopher Sally of New Life Christian Fellowship Church. We wear the mask that grins and lies, that hides our cheeks and shades our eyes. This debt we pay to human God with torn and bleeding hearts, we smile and mouth with myriad subtleties. Why should the world be overwise and counting all our tears and sighs nay let them only see us while we wear the mask we smile but oh great christ the cries from tortured souls to thee arise we uh, sing but oh the clay is vile beneath our feet and long the mile but let the world dream otherwise we wear the mask our brother paul lawrence dunbar authored that program uh that that poem and it is a powerful reflection particularly of the african-american experience here in america Because part of our show of strength, amen, and part of our survival strategy when dealing with pain and suffering and trial and tribulation, when dealing with what life throws at us that that really is painful to us as a survival strategy that has seen value for us as black people, we put the mask on and as that right guard commercial used to say, never let them see you sweat. Amen, we, we never want our oppressors, if you will, to see us sweat. And so we have ingrained over time a practice of wearing the mask to show strength. And as good as that has been in terms of a survival strategy for us as a people, I will tell you it's, it, that it is for a believer, it is a poor strategy that has a high cost. Amen. Let me say that again. It, Wearing the mask is a poor strategy for a believer in the body of Christ, and it has a high cost. Because if you and I don't talk about our pain and our suffering, our trial and our tribulation, whether it's self-inflicted or not, if we don't share that the way that we should, God can't use it the way he wants to. Let me say that again. If you don't share it the way that you should, God can't use it the way that he wants to. We have got to learn in the body of Christ That in times of challenge that can cause depression, that can cause discouragement, that can cause despondency. When we're facing life's disappointments, our natural tendency is to do what? Wear the mask. That's what Smokey Robinson was talking about in Tracks of My Tears. He said, outside, I'm masquerading, but inside, my hope is fading. Many of us are dealing with things that are like that. And I want to encourage us around the, this practice that we have of wearing the mask when we're going through times of challenge. It is not a good strategy for someone in the body of Christ. But we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and I want us to really start at verse, verse 3. The apostle Paul says to us, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all of our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the same comfort wherewith we are comforted of God. You'll have to excuse me. I know it in the King James. I, I, blessed be God. Amen. Even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and the God of all comfort. I, I, I know there's a limited number of folks in here today, but but I need some help. 
I can't keep saying blessed be God, even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, and remind you that he is the God of all mercies and the father of comfort and not have everybody under the sound of my voice at least say amen. When you're going through, beloved, sometimes the last thing you want to say is blessed be God. Let's just be real. Can we be real in the minutes that we have this morning? Sometimes the last thing you want to do is say, blessed be God. And part of the reason is when you talk about discouragement, it's that lack of vision when we have those unreconciled differences, when we don't see things like God sees them, when we want different things in our life to manifest themselves than what we see from God, it is very difficult in times of challenge when we're facing unmet expectations, when we might have an unhealthy body, when there's an unplugged lifestyle or some uncontrolled flesh or, or there's some unreconciled differences and we're fighting all of those challenges and we we talked about those things last week it's really really difficult if you don't get into the right headspace if you don't get your mind right if you don't get your spirit right to simply exhale and say blessed be God but if you can't lift your head up and say to your heavenly father blessed be God you won't get the benefits of what comes next blessed be God even the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and the God of some comfort. No, the God of all comfort, not not just some comfort. He's the God of all comfort. Amen. That, that, that's got to help you. And so the first thing I want you to realize ab about these verses and I want to just remind you and encourage you around is you and I need to do a couple of things that these verses show us when it comes to discouragement and, and fighting against the challenge of it. You've got to embrace the comfort of God. You've got to embrace the comfort of God. But in order to embrace the comfort of God, you have got to take that mask off. Amen. The first person you need to take the mask off in front of is the God of mercies, the father of mercies, excuse me, and the God of all comfort. Amen. That's the first the first person that you should be the most intimate with. I know you and I want to keep the mask on for other people. I know we want to post on our Facebook and our Instagram and our Twitter that everything in our life is going well. And sometimes we assume and rightly so that if you're not posting, something must be wrong in your life. Amen. Because most of us don't post anything that's bad. We only post that everything is good. It's like we're living a sweet life. Everything is great. That's part Part of the mask that we're doing when we're going through we're masquerading but inside our our hope is fading when we're wearing the mask that grins and lies he said why should the world be other what should should they be otherwise and counting all our tears and sighs nay let them only see us while we wear the mask but the first person you and I need to take that mask off, that mask that's hiding pain, that, that, that mask that's hiding suffering, the mask that says, I, I just don't know what to do. You, you and I need to take the mask off and say, blessed be God. We got to embrace the comfort of God. <laughs> Psalms 42. For many of you, you know that that's that's one of my favorite scriptures. Because that's the scripture that has, as the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. The psalmist says, my soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat all day, day and night, while they continually say unto me, where is thy God? Here it is in verse four. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I have gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with the multitude 
that kept holy day. The thing is, in verses one and two, when he says, as the deer panteth for the water, my soul panteth after thee. What I'm saying to you is when you talk about embracing the comfort of God, you've got to, you must long for God's presence. That's what Psalms 42 reminds us about. You've got to long for God's presence. That starts when you say, blessed be God. I got to long to be in his presence because you know that in his presence, you'll find provision in his presence. You'll, you'll get a, a, a you'll get a, to avail yourself of his power and his peace his comfort everything is in the presence of God and so you've got to long to be in his presence but it's not just this and this is what the part that really grieves my soul in this place of of COVID the psalmist says in verse 4 not only do I want to I gotta long for God's presence he literally is saying I need to look for God's place where can I go to catch up with God he says I want to go into the temple I want to go to the place where there's a voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept holy day you need to be as much as you possibly can on your knees with your face before your God but in this place there's something about the house of God and when this is all over don't you dare forget there is something powerful about getting up and coming to the house of God it's a privilege it's an honor and if you are going to fight off this discouragement that comes back and forth that you might see in Psalms chapter 42 he says I long for his presence here yeah, but I but I also I look to God's place and then finally he says yet the Lord will command his love and kindness in the daytime and in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life he says I, I'm going to long for his presence I'm going to look to God's place and I am going to lean on God's person I'm going to lean on him blessed be God I'm going to lean on him and if I do all of that, I have to do that if I'm going to live for his purpose. That's just a bonus. That's just a bonus of what I'm talking about when I say embrace the comfort of God. But your mindset has to be, I want to get with God. I long for his presence. I long to be amongst his people. I want to be in his, his place. I, I, I want to go where there's a, the sound and the voice of joy and praise. I want to literally lean on his person because I know everything I need, God is. All of that I need so that I can live for his purpose so that I literally won't be discouraged because literally every every time the, the psalmist has to say said but but they keep saying to me my tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me where is thy God and again these bouts of discouragement are coming but he keeps going back intermittently and says you know why is my soul cast down why are you cast down my soul why are you disquieted within me but he says, hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. As we said before, like sometimes you've got to encourage yourself. But I love it because we see the unfolding battle of the mind that says, I know what I need to do. I know how I need to do it. But yet and still there are people whispering to me yet and still I have some doubts and I got to just say, yep, but yet I'm going to praise him. A yet praise means you don't see what God is going to do. Amen. You don't see it yet. But he says, even if you don't see it, praise me anyway. That's why Hezekiah Walker song says, while I'm waiting, while I'm waiting, I'm going to praise him. While I'm waiting, I don't see it yet, but while I'm waiting. So not only do you need to ex embrace the comfort of God, beloved, you need to express the comfort of God. And how do you, where am I getting that, that from? Because he says he comforteth us in all of our tribulation. And then he tells us why in verse 4 of 2 Corinthians 1. He says that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble with the same comfort that we had from God. Literally, what that verse is reminding us is God never wastes a hurt God never wastes an experience. If it happened to you, 
no matter how terrible it is, no matter how awful it was and you got through it, you need to be able to express to somebody else. God, my deliverer, God, my healer, God, my miracle worker got me through. And if he got me through, he'll get you through. And so you need to express the comfort of God to other folks. So you not only just embrace the comfort of God, you've got to express the comfort of God, which will encourage connection with others. There's no better way than to, con to connect with somebody as that when they share something with you about their life, no matter how bad it is or no matter how tragic, to be able to tell them, I've had a similar situation. I'm not going to say I've had your exact situation because what's happening to you is happening to you but I know what you're going through I've I've kind of been there I was a teenage uh, 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 mother who got who, who got uh, uh, pregnant in high school and there could be somebody that's sitting out there a young person that's going through that and, and dealing with that but they'll think I can't share that with anybody I'm gonna play the shame game I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out I'm gonna pull back but we're saying no I, I don't want you to do that I want you to realize I had a similar situation and I had a tough road and this happened and that happened but I prayed and I and I and I and I leaned on God's person and I longed for his presence and these things happened to me and if God brought me through he can bring you through so you not just embrace the comfort of God baby you got to express the comfort of God that way you'll connect with somebody else and that's why he gave you the comfort he did it's, 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 it's like a revolutionary comfort. He says, I give it to you. That's the, that's the vertical part of it. And then you can also get and receive comfort from your fellow believers. He says, I got it all covered. This comfort thing, I know what I'm doing with this. That's why I am the God of all comfort. Amen. I got it covered when I give it to you. I got it covered when you give it to somebody else. And hopefully when you were going through your situation, somebody else who's been through your situation or just wanted to pray for you, stand with you, whatever it was, they comforted you as well. So I, I, I've got you surrounded from the front, from the back, from the side, from the top, from the bottom, from the head of your, uh, from, from the head all the way down to the toes. I've got you covered in comfort because I'm the God of all comfort and I'm the father of mercies. And you can't connect with others if you don't share. And you cannot share if you keep on that mask. Now, I'm not talking about your socially distanced mask. Keep, keep that mask on. Amen. Don't, don't get that twisted. Pastor told us to take off the mask. No, that's not the mask that grins and lies. That's the mask that keeps us safe. Amen. Keep that mask on. But I'm talking about that other mask. Amen. And so the, the, the scripture goes on to really talk about uh, um, in verses eight through 10, really. But he, he, he says, for the sufferings of Christ abound in us and our consolation also aboundeth in Christ. The apostle Paul says, literally, there are things that I've suffered. He said that I, I don't want to say I, I, I want to, to keep suffering but he says when I do it also abounds in consolation because I know how to get in on that comfort exchange that God has that revolutionary comfort exchange where I give comfort and receive comfort based upon what I've gone through my trial my testimony that's what that's really what I say when I say express the comfort of God that means you give a testimony a real testimony not a fake Facebook testimony but a real testimony about what God did who God is how he brought you through how he brought you out that's real stuff that's real talk people need to hear that that's how we connect with each other because we'll realize that we're all human we're going through a human experience there are ups and downs in life if somebody tells you something and you don't have any kind of of reference point for that I'm sure you could think of, of, of somebody in your circle of influence that might to be able to connect with somebody else he wants us to connect that's what's so devastating about this period of time in our lives where there's a global Global pandemic because I know Satan is trying to hijack and leverage this opportunity to keep us disconnected and he wants to de-emphasize connection so that even when we're available uh, in 2021 to come back and be together there are people that are going to be like I'm, I'm good where I'm at and Satan is going to be clapping and we will be the worst for it because we're not connecting the way we should
And our hope of you is steadfast, it says in verse 7, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, ye shall also be partakers of the consolation. I love verse 8. For we would not, brethren, and it can only be read in the King James, in my opinion. For we would not, brethren, have you to be ignorant of our trouble, which came on us in Asia. He, he said, I, I want you to be ignorant about what happened. NIV says uninformed. That's a, that's a nicer word. I like the word. We don't want you to be ignorant. I know that's not good English, but that's good preaching. I don't want you to be ignorant about what happened in the province of Asia. And just know parenthetically that Asia has been causing problems for everybody all the way since biblical times. It's not just Asian carp and Asian flu and Asian, <laughs> Asian mad hornets and, <laughs> and, and coronavirus and everything else. A a Asia's causing trouble way back when the Apostle Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant. Every time we've been in Asia... It was off the chain. Some things happened when we were in Asia. He says, we were pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. But we had, and we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Literally, this is, this is the verse that disputes that phantom verse that people quote that's not in the Bible that says, God will not put on you more than you can bear. It's not true. The Apostle Paul raises his hand in the back of your lecture and says, no, no, because when we were in Asia, amen, he said we were, we were pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. He said we thought that the best option in our minds, you know, in a, in a, in a mind that, that we, we had to fight against this option, the best option we saw was death. That was the best option. And there's so many people whose circumstances in life get us to a place where we believe that the only thing we can do is end our lives. It's, 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 it's more prevalent than you think. Why? Because people have on masks and they don't talk about it. But we got some folks among us that are dealing with some heavy things in their hearts and in their minds. And they literally think the best option is for me not to be alive. Jonah said that. He said, I'd rather be dead than deal with what I need to deal with with you, God. <laughs> but it wasn't just him. As you might expect, <laughs> Job went through because of all of his trouble. Job says some things in Job chapter 10. He says, wherefore then hast thou brought me forth out of the womb? Oh, that I had given up the ghost and no eye had ever seen me. He said, I should have been as though I had not been. Mm. I should have been carried from the womb to the grave. Are not my days few? Cease them and let me alone. Then I may take comfort a little. He said, the only thing I have going for me is, is that my days should be few and they should be, it should be over soon. Then I'll be able to go down to the, to the grave from whence I came, even to the land of darkness and the shadow of death. You can imagine with all that Job went through, he said, literally, it would have been better for me never to be born. He said, it would have been better for me to go straight from the womb to the grave. That's depression. That's discouragement. Jonah had something similar for what we would describe as really no good reason, as we we we've, we've talked about. Uh, Jonah before uh, J Jonah saw that plant come up and die at the same time but in, in Jonah 1 and 17 uh, you know about now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days but when Jonah was on that boat and Jonah told them I know why we're in all this tempest and trouble I know why I know why we're here so he said listen take me up throw me into sea into the sea and the sea will be calm for I know that for my sake, this great tempest is upon you. I'm telling you what Jonah believed and what Jonah thought was good. I don't want to go to Nineveh anyway. I know if they throw me into the sea, what will happen is it'll be over for me, over for them, 
over for me. But verse 17 says, now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. Jonah was not counting on but the Lord. Amen. And every time that Jonah talked about death, if you look in Jonah chapter four, it, there's this back and forth where Jonah said that I, I should die. And it says, but the Lord said to Jonah, but the Lord said to Jonah, every time Jonah got to a place of despondency and even thinking about, I want to die, God intervened and talked to him and God intervenes and talks to you and he talks to me as well. And he says, listen, let me let me tell you, my child, what's going on. It's the option is not for you to end your life. The option is not for you to think that death is your best option. Amen. And so when the Apostle Paul said in the province of Asia, we 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 looked and said, listen, it, it's, it's so rough around here with what has gone on that we despaired even of life. But we and we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should. But he says we. God did this so that that we would have the sentence of death in ourselves. Yes, but not that we should trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Do you hear what the Apostle Paul is really saying? He's saying even if the circumstances are so bad, bad that we despaired for our lives and we lost our lives, we're serving somebody that even if he takes you out can bring you back. He said, even if I get taken out, I'm serving a God. Y'all not hearing me. I'm serving a God that can bring me back. And so I understand this is what I want you to learn from these verses. This is what I want to remind myself of when you're going through a place of despondency and discouragement and the circumstances are even so bad that you thought about taking your life. And I'm thinking of friends of mine that I've talked to and, and folks that have that have been in our in our body and, 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 and under my under my leadership and under my care in terms of that have told me my circumstances are, are such that I. I've thought about committing suicide. I want you from these scriptures to emphasize the command of God. And when I say the command of God, I'm not talking about an edict from God. I'm talking about the control of God. I'm talking about the fact that you and I need to be reminded that God is in control. Power and authority from the one who can even raise the dead, even in a situation where you despair even of life and you think death is the best option. You could take that option and find yourself rebooted and right back here because you serve a God that for his purposes raises the dead. You got, I just want to emphasize here and the Apostle Paul does the emphasize the command of God but you can't I don't want us to just look at this passage and, and and emphasize the command of God I want us to experience the command of God experience the command of God I love the scripture that says he he de who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver and whom we trust that he will yet come on somebody deliver us he said he delivered us he delivers us now and we'll trust that he'll keep delivering us he God has got just like he's got that comfort thing covered God's got that delivery thing covered he says I want you to be able to experience the one who has delivered who continues to deliver to deliver and will keep on delivering he's got it all covered it's just like about with sin he's delivered us in the past from the penalty of sin in the present he's delivering us from the power of sin and in the future he'll deliver us even from the presence of sin I don't know if you heard what I said past present future from the past the penalty of sin in the present the power of sin in the future the presence of sin he is a deliverer experience the command of God and when I think of the command of God I think of these words Four words, sit back and relax. Sit back and relax. Now, I will share with you 
that the genesis of those statements is, is not in the awesome power of God, but in the selfishness of my friend Kevin Claxton. So many years ago when we were in high school, Pastor Tyrus and Brother Kevin came to visit me in Chicago. Pastor Tyrus forgot his wallet. And he said to Kevin, I, I would like to borrow some money and, and then I'll give it to you when I get back. Because, you know, we got plans. We're going out to do things, do whatever. And Kevin said, OK, all right. But he didn't actually give him the money. What Kevin would do is everywhere we would go, Pastor Tyrus would be out. We'd be at the store. Just want to get a pack of gum. He had to go and ask Kevin. Kevin, can, 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 I, can, can I get the gum? And Kevin's response there was, sit back and relax. I got it. Tyrus was like, but, but it would be better if you would just give, give me the money. Then I, I don't have to keep going back to you. So then we go to the store and we go here and we go to every place. Tyrus had to come back to him and ask him. And his response every single time was, Ty, sit back and relax. Sit back and relax. I got you. But Ty was like, I, I want to have me. All I need is $20. I don't need to settle up with you. The gum is 35 cents. The McDonald's was $3. And Kevin was controlling it. So unlike Kevin, who did not have Tyrus's best interest at heart, God does have your best interest at heart and can tell you, sit back and relax. I don't need to give it to you to control. I can control all the situations in your life. Keep coming back to me. Keep talking to me. Keep coming to me. You need that? I got you. You need that? I got you. But you need to sit back and relax and experience the control and the command of God. So emphasize the command of God and experience the command of God, which will energize confidence in God. Because as your life unfolds and you do what you're supposed to do and you build up an experience of depending on God and God delivers. He's delivered in the past. He delivers in the present. He delivers in the future. And if you need any encouragement around that, remember he's delivered you from the penalty of sin in the past, the power of sin in the present, and it'll be the presence of sin in the future. He's in the delivery business. Sit back and relax. He's got you. He's got you. And last but not least, this is just a, a bonus as we close. That verse in verse 11 says, ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. I don't, I, I would rather read that in the, in the King, in the NIV. As you help us by your prayers, that many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. The thanks of many, it says, and the prayers of many. Here's the bonus. When you take off that mask, you get an opportunity to employ the community of God. To employ, that means you get, you, you get to utilize, you get to benefit from and leverage, if you will, not just your prayers and your thanksgiving, but you allow that to spread. You allow other folks to get in on what God is doing. Amen. And so that when you take the mask off and you share your trial, your trouble, what you feel, it doesn't even have to necessarily be a trial. But it's the fact that you're, you're dealing with something that you're dis despondent, you despair, you're worried about your your children, you're worried about the schooling, you're worried about health or strength. There's so many things that you could be concerned about. If you share that with somebody else, you employ the community of God. That's the the power of the body of Christ is that we are a body and we are many members but one body. 
take advantage of the many members. Employ the community of God. You employ the community of God when you share with the community of God. If you never tell me what's going on in your life, you cannot employ me to pray for you. And then when God does what God does and delivers you, or he doesn't change your circumstance, but he changes your attitude about the circumstance so that that unreconciled difference that you have with God, you get on God's page, which is just as good as God for God because he's been waiting for you to say yea and amen to what he has yea to his will yea to his way he wants you on his page and you come back and tell me I was praying for this and either you got it or you got on God's page and you didn't I'm gonna thank God for what he did in your life because if he can do it in your life he'll do it in my life and so he says many thanks have come up because of the situations that go around when you get into a place of comfort and God delivers. Many thanks and then also there's many prayers. Amen. And so you employ the community of God. They start to pray. You also excite the community of God. That's what the thanks are all about. Don't you get excited when you hear prayer requests that have been answered? I spend the Bible studies I have with the young college men, the Bible study that I have with the men, the first part of it is always about prayer requests and praise reports. We love to hear the reports that come back from the field to the tent that says, God did this, God did that, I'm still dealing with this, pray for me about that. But then when you see some, something that was on the prayer list weeks ago that God has answered, you excited. That excites me. <laughs> Employ the community of God. Excite the community of God. And that will enhance conversation with God. It enhances conversation with God. When you share and you drop that mask, ultimately you enhance conversation with God not only your conversation hopefully but there's other conversations that people are having all over the body of Christ because of you because of you I go to the father on my knees and say brother Kevin is concerned about this sister Kim is concerned about that sister Kelly is my wife is or, or brother Robert is and it's about it's about things that are happening in the physical or the things that are happening on their jobs and so I spend time in conversation with God not just about myself but about you the more prayer requests that we share the more we need to be on our knees the happier our God is. That means you're coming back to me. That means you know that you're saying, blessed be God. That means you know I'm in the delivery business because you appreciate the fact that I have delivered, I am delivering, and, I, and I'm still in the delivery business, and I'll deliver again. And so if we're constantly in that cycle where we're talking to God and we're conversating with God about ourselves and our needs and other things, God is doing a work in us. And as the more we talk to him, he's not only hearing your requests, he's helping to shape your will into his will so that you eventually start to pray for what he already has for you and he'll give it to you every time. The more time we spend on our face before our God in conversation, the better we'll be as a people and you cannot stay on your face before God and stay discouraged at the same time. You can't. Because if you call his name, He'll remind you of who he is. If you call his name, he'll share his resume with you. If you call his name, he'll remind you he's still in the delivery business. If you call his name, he'll remind you he's still in the healing business. If you call his name, he'll remind you that even if you despair of your life, he can raise you from the dead. And if you're a believer in the body of Christ, you know that he will raise every last one of us on that last day from the dead. That we have eternal life in him and we have uh, abundant life now and eternal life later. You start thinking about God and you start praising God and you, and you start reaching out to God. I tell you the spirit your spirit will lift you'll start to lift your head up you'll think about your circumstances differently you'll do a different thing because you'll be reminded of the God you serve who's delivered you continues to deliver you and on your on that hope and that hope alone that he will continue to deliver us you'll never do any of that if you keep that mask on 
drop it. I know it's been a, a great tactic for us as black people. But as believers, it kills us. We have got to drop the mask. Because God sees behind it anyway, even if nobody else does. Drop the mask and allow God to do a work in you.